So we're going to talk a little bit about what is a bootstrap approach and why might we want to use that. So when doing statistical inference, it gener generally relies on the sampling distribution as well as a standard error. Yeah. We're going to do all this in the context of one numeric variable and estimating a mean. So first let's talk about what we've learned so far. This parametric approach or sometimes called a large sample approach. So we have the entire population, and from them we draw a sample of n observations, and we use that to calculate our estimate. Here we're going to talk about sample mean. Okay, now, in reality, we've only observed this one sample and got this one estimate. But we have this idea of a sampling distribution, right? this theoretical set of all the possible estimates we could get. Okay, so. This here, um, we kind of imagine. Okay. Imagine if we were to take a sample of size n again from the population and get another estimate. Then take another sample of size n, get another estimate. Do this over and over again. Okay. So we imagine doing this, and theory, a okay, large sample theory, tells us that the distribution of all these possible estimates, okay, which we call the sampling distribution, is going to be approximately normal. Okay, in other words, the histogram or distribution of all these imaginary different estimates we could have get, mathematical theory tells us these will be approximately normally distributed under some conditions, um, the main one being large sample size. And the standard deviation of all these estimates Right, these imaginary all estimates we could get. Mathematical theory tells us that this here happens to be equal to the standard deviation of the individuals divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay. Or um, in the case of a sample of data, the sample standard deviation. Okay, so this all these results here we get from mathematical theory. Right, this imaginary set of all the possible estimates we could get. Theory tells us they'll be approximately normally distributed under certain conditions, the main one being a large sample size. And the standard deviation of all these estimates, right on average how far are the estimates moving from the true mean, um, is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So we're going to get to talking about a bootstrap approach. So in a moment we'll get to talking about exactly what it is, but first let's try and build up why might we do this? Okay, the two main reasons for considering a bootstrap approach rather than this large sample theory approach. Um, the first is what if we don't have a large sample? So if we don't have a large sample size and we can't assume that the sampling distribution is approximately normal, then what do we do? Okay, and a second reason, and maybe this is the, the more useful reason, is sometimes getting the standard deviation of the estimate, okay, what we're going to call the standard error, might be difficult. Okay, so in this case we're dealing with an estimate that's just a mean. Okay, a mean is a pretty simple estimate and the theory has been built for us to know that the standard deviation of the mean or the standard error is approximately the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay, but what if the estimate we were looking at, suppose that we were interested in estimating the range from the 80th to 90th percentile. Okay, so what's the distance between the 80th and 90th percentile? That's our estimate. We can collect some data, we can calculate the 90th and the 80th percentile, and then find their range. Okay, but getting, we know that that's just an estimate. Different set of data, we'd get a slightly different estimate. Calculating the standard error for the 90th minus 80th percentile might not be so straightforward. Okay, or in other cases, um, the estimate we're looking at might be some composite measure made up of multiple items. Right, so we may take multiple measurements and use them to come up with some composite measure. Again, that's just an estimate. Different data, we're going to get a slightly different estimate. Okay. Working out the standard error for this composite measure might be quite difficult or impossible mathematically. Um, so we're there we can try using a bootstrapping approach. So let's start to build up what that is exactly. Okay, first thing I'm going to do it in a picture, then I'm going to try to explain it through words, and then we're going to do it looking at this example here. Okay, so. We have the same idea. Here we have the population. 
Okay, so here's all the individuals in the population. And we're going to take a sample out of there. We reach in this population, we pull out n individuals, right? and we get a sample. I'll draw that in here. Okay, there's our sample, and that ends up giving us a sample mean. Okay, so same up here. Maybe I should have drawn that in. Rather than using theory to tell us what's the kind of theoretical distribution of all these possible estimates, what we're going to do is we're going to create this through resampling. Okay. So what we're going to do is if we think that our sample is representative of the population, which it should be, okay, and, and assuming the sample represents the population is true whether we're looking at a parametric approach or a bootstrap approach. Okay, we, we need to have that built in there that our sample we're assuming is representative of the population. Okay. What we can do is we can reach into our sample and we can take a what we're going to call a resample. Okay. And I'll expand on this idea exactly what we mean by that in a little bit. But we can reach into our sample and try and generate a new sample from that. We're going to do it with replacement. Okay. In doing that, is going to give us, I'm going to label it x bar 2 with a star. Star to indicate it's a bootstrap estimate. Okay. Let's do that again. We're going to reach into our sample and we're going to generate a new resample. And again, this is with replacement. And we're going to get another estimate. Okay. And we're going to repeat this. Remember, in the theoretical approach, this um, was if we did an infinite amount of times, right, all possible estimates. Here, we're going to repeat it b times. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more about how many times we should do that. So then we can get resample, again, with replacement. And this is going to give us our beef estimate. Okay, so um, rather than relying on theory to try and tell us what is the set of all possible estimates look like, we're going to try and generate that through resampling. Okay, so by taking um, resamples of our observed data, we're going to try and mimic this idea of getting new sample estimates. So right, if we were to look at the distribution of all these estimates, that gives us what we call the bootstrap sampling distribution. Okay, again, rather than theory telling us what these would look like under certain conditions, we're going to try and generate all possible samples using this resampling approach. Okay. And the distribution of all of those gives us the bootstrap sampling distribution. The standard deviation of all these bootstrap estimates that we've got is going to be what we call our bootstrap standard error of the mean. Maybe I should label that here. This is our standard error of the mean through theory or through a resampling approach. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, how this bootstrapping or resampling is done. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to reach into our sample. Okay, and we'll use this little toy example here in a moment to talk our way through. You see I've made it small, just five observations, numbers that are going to be easy to work with. Okay, so we reach into our sample. We're going to resample with replacement a sample of the same size. Okay, so in this example here, I have five observations. What I'm going to do is randomly select an observation, put that back in the pool, then randomly select another, put it back in the pool, and do that till I get five observations. Okay. Then for those five, I'm going to calculate the mean. Okay, or calculate my estimate. Okay. I'm going to repeat that 
I'll repeat that approach, B times. Now the number of times you repeat this approach is up to you. There's different guidelines that exist. In the past, a thousand, um, at least a thousand, used to be kind of the minimum suggestion. Um, it's gone up a bit. Um, I would say at least 10,000 or more. Um, really, it, it doesn't matter. You can do this as many times as you want. The only real limitation is time or computing power. Um, an important note is that increasing B, okay, increasing the number of resamples you take, can't increase the amount of information in your data. So taking this example here, we only had five observations. If we were to repeat this and okay, do a resampling one billion times, that's not going to be um, more useful than only doing it 10,000 times. Okay, we can't squeeze more information out. We only have five observations. That's the amount of info we have. Okay. Just increasing B, getting it larger, is going to get you a slightly better estimate of what's the sampling distribution. Hopefully you can imagine if instead of 10,000 we took a million, we're going to get closer to all possible estimates. We're going to get a slightly more reliable estimate of the standard error. Okay, but it doesn't increase the information. It just gives us a more, I guess, stable estimate of these. Okay, so let's work our way through this toy example and uh, see how bootstrapping works. Okay, so first I'm going to take resample number one. Okay, I'll just abbreviate it RS number one. So what I'm going to do is reach into here, randomly select an observation. Suppose that we ended up with 75. Okay. Then we put it back in the pool of observations and then randomly select another. Suppose we end up with 90. Put it back in the pool, select another. End up with 80, put it back in the pool. I end up with 90 again. Okay. Put it back in the pool and I end up with 85. Okay, so our first bootstrap estimate came out to a mean of 84. So I guess it's worth mentioning explicitly here that when we do this uh, resampling approach or this bootstrap approach, we can get the same observation multiple times. We can also have certain observations not appear at all in that resample. And hopefully that should make sense, right? If we um, took a resample that was just you know, our exact data every time, that's not going to be anything useful. Okay, so let's imagine doing that again. Resample number two, okay, reaching this population, end up with 85, sorry, not this population, this sample, right, our sample of data. Put it back in, reach in, we end up with 60. Randomly select another, 75, then 85, and then we get 60 again. Okay, and we find this second Estimate comes out to be 73. Okay. Repeat this over and over. Let's just go up to the last one. Resample number B. Okay, our last one. Um, we end up with 90, then 80, 85, 85 again, and 60. And these give us a sample mean of 80. Okay. Now, if we were to go through and make a histogram of all these estimates, okay, that's going to be our bootstrap sampling distribution. If we were to go and calculate the standard deviation of all these estimates, that's going to give us our estimate of the bootstrap standard error. Okay. You'll notice if you go through and work through just these ones here, the standard error of all these, okay, the bootstrap estimate, is going to come out to be 5.57, okay. which is reasonably close to that there. And actually, I only did it for these three observations, for these three estimates here. So you can imagine if we had 10,000 of these, the standard deviation of all these estimates is going to come out amazingly close to that there. Okay, so while it might not be intuitive, um, the results we get from a bootstrapping approach are nearly identical to what we get through the um, large sample theory. Okay, but the pro of these is that they always work. When our assumptions aren't met for a large sample theory, we can't work that way. Bootstrapping approach will work. So we're going to have some separate videos that look at running through examples of these. 
sum that, generate a bootstrap sampling distribution, calculate the standard error, and compare them to the theoretical results to see how, um, how identical they come out to be. Um, looking at constructing confidence intervals or testing hypotheses using a bootstrapping approach. Now, one final thing I want to leave on is a lot of people are going to have this question. I know when I first encountered this stuff, I had this question. So you might be thinking, doesn't this bootstrapping approach depend too much on the observed data? Right. So for example, you might be thinking, what if we got a really extreme value here? Instead of 90, let's suppose we had 10. Okay, we had a really outlying value. Isn't that going to affect this bootstrapping approach? Won't that observation show up in a lot of resamples and skew things? Um, well, that, that is true, but if we think of the large sample approach um, that we've seen, we go, and let's put it in the context of a confidence interval. We go from our estimate, plus or minus t standard errors. Now looking at this approach, this also depends very much on our observed data. What's going to happen with that outlier? It's going to skew this mean. Right? It's going to inflate that standard deviation. Okay? So um, while it might be tempting to think, if we get some extreme outlying value in there, that's going to show up quite often in resamples and skew things. Okay? But this bootstrapping approach, um, this bootstrapping approach relies as much on your observed data as these large sample approaches do. Okay? Bootstrapping is an amazingly powerful tool. Uh, part of the reason why it's been a bit slower catching on is that um, it's a fairly in, well, in the academic world, a fairly recent development. I think sometime in the 80s it came in, and it really depends on computing power. Before having um, large computing power, we weren't able to take our sample of data and resample over and over again. It was, it was too time consuming. Um, but yeah, I said, it's an amazingly powerful um, tool and uh, worth exploring. Hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to our channel, like our videos. Stick around guys, cause we got lots more. Statistics is hard to say, poopally. No, sign up, poopally.